Yeah, I've been recording a little bit, 10 seconds in, actually, no. Though by the time you see this, I'm actually, have to edit these videos down, and, yeah, this shirt is small, and, kind of see my, my chest here. Yeah. Little open shirt here. Alright, well, without further ado, let's just start into the review. I just saw Red Notice today. It's the newest film that hit Netflix, stars Dwayne Johnson, Ryan Reynolds, Gaga Doe, and it's this kind of international caper film. This time, the plot is more easier to describe. It's essentially, you know, an FBI profiler is going after, you know, actually, no, actually teams up with, you know, this, you know, art thief to stop this other art thief in this caper to find the three eggs of Cleopatra. And, um, that's it to the plot. That's all I'm, uh, gonna give you, because I don't like to spoil much. In fact, let me just see if I can... Can I zoom out a little? Let me just... Sorry, I gotta hold the camera. I'm using a pillow this time. Yeah, I think I'm on, like, 20 mil. Uh, like, I just got this camera, fe like, last month, and I'm still trying to figure out the kinks of it. So, yeah, this is a film that actually came out last week in theaters as part of a deal Netflix has with movie theaters is, like... Uh, like, a week before it premieres on Netflix, it'll be in movie theaters, and then it'll officially be on Netflix around the world. So, yeah, I think that deal's only in the U.S., because I can't find theatrical releases of Netflix anywhere else, aside from the U.S. But if you saw the trailers, you kind of know what you're getting into. Of course, this film is directed by, uh, well, written and directed by Ross and Marshall Thurber, who, and this is the third collaboration between him and The Rock. It's funny, because, like, Ross and Marshall Thurber got his start in comedy films. Of course, Dodgeball is, you know, regard, you know, a comedy classic regarded by many. And, you know, of course, he's also done Were the Millers. And then, but, you know, this is like Central, After Self, Central Intelligence and Skyscraper that they've, they've been working together. And so it's like that thing where it's like the relationship works so well that it's like, hey, I got this new movie here. You want to do it? And this is, of course, another production that was affected by the pandemic. It actually started production last year. Like, they were already starting principal photography, and the moment the pandemic hit, they just had to send everyone away. And if you see the trailers, you know exactly what you're going to get into. You're going to see The Rock play the straight man. You're going to see Ryan Reynolds be the wisecracking goofball, who's kind of there to give jokes, you know, mostly. And he's mostly the comic relief character. And you see Al Gadot as this, you know, always the step ahead woman, obviously. So, yeah, actually, I still have the timer on. All oh, right, I forgot. <laughs> Sorry, it's because it, it took me a pain in the ass to edit my No Time to Die review. But, yeah, um, I am going to review this very quickly. Um, this actually, I did not read the Rotten Tomato score. The Metacritic, I assume, is at 35. It was 35%. But it's got, like, a 7 on IMDb, so this is probably, like, one of those Venom 2018 type of things, where it's like, the critics are destroying it, but most of the general audience seems to be okay with it. I actually haven't really seen anyone else talk about this movie. Um, I guess I should say what I thought about the previous collaborations, you know, between The Rock and Ross and Thurber. Um, I did enjoy Central Intelligence. I kind of enjoyed it. One of the few times I actually... I, I mean, Kevin Hart still does the Kevin Hart stick, but it's mostly... It's got The Rock, so... I just have this thing where it's like, I'll watch anything The Rock in, in... And I like most of the movies The Rock has done. Except for Pain and Gain. I really hated that movie. To I hate that movie with a... With a pat. I hate that movie with, like, with every fiber of my being. And, um, I also, Skyscraper is an interesting movie where I, I like, I thought it was fine at first, but then I saw it a couple more times, I was like, you know what, this movie's not great, but it is kind of starting to grow on me, so it's like that movie that you think is okay at first, and it's like, you know, this is just a fun movie, even though I do admit it is very Die Hard-esque, and I actually still, I have it here somewhere in my collection, you've probably seen it, but... Overall, what did I think about the movie? I, I'm not reading any other critical reviews. Uh, I didn't watch any reviews for this film. I'm just operating by my own opinion. What did I think about it? Um, I liked it. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun film. I knew what I was getting into, but there are some clever twists and turns. 
in this. And obviously, I do like The Rock in this. You know, he's really fun. and he, He's essentially playing the straight man. And, and Ryan Reynolds is there. He's doing his own shtick where he's cracking jokes from time to time. Doing the Ryan Reynolds as himself thing. But it's like the, the current Ryan Reynolds we like and not the Ryan Reynolds from like the early, like some of the early stuff Ryan Reynolds has done. Ryan Reynolds is that actor who like weirdly starts to grow on you as well. If it wasn't for Deadpool, I don't think he would have been as well loved as he is now. Because like you look at some of the earlier stuff, like, I mean of course you know Van Wilder made him more popular but he did some stuff like, you know, like when he was trying to do bigger stuff like Blade Trinity and X-Men Origins and Green Lantern and RPD, they didn't work, although to be fair, it wasn't his fault, it was just the quality of the screenplay. Um, but yeah, he, he's really good, he's really funny in the, he's really fun in this too, like, he does kind of play well with the Rock, so they're kind of like, you know, it, it, this is kind of like Hobbs and Shaw in many ways, although, it's not the Rock doing his own jokes, you know, like he did play off Jason Statham, although I would say kind of like Hobbs and Shaw a little better, that's just me, though. Um, but, yeah, I thought, you know, that they played well off each other. You know, of course, the one of them is the straight man. The other, So they essentially it's like the buddy cop movie, except they're not cops. You know, well, one of them, I think, is a cop, and the other one is just an art thief. And Gal Gadot was pretty fun in this role. She's really great. I, I, I like Gal Gadot. I won't say she's, like, you know, this is... I mean, this is, like, obviously, people are going to say, why am I praising this film? This is a film that is not going to win awards, okay? Keep in mind, alright? I'm not like every critic saying, Ooh, you know, I think this is going to win an Oscar. Mm, I'm not that kind of guy. You know, I, I stopped being that guy ever since, and I stopped really listening to critics. The only critic I listen to is Chris Stockman. So, yeah. Um, you know, and ultimately this thing is kind of like... But, you know, back to Gal Gadot, because I zoned out for a while. She was fun in this, too. I Like, all the three main actors, they really work well off of each other. There are some parts where it's like, eh, but it mostly works. And one I will say is that the cinematography, the, the, like, this cinematography is beautiful. And they're showing some of the scenery shots, like, early, early unit shots. And uh, there's a lot of shots that were obviously in the trailer. You see, um... You know, but it was like, wow, this, you know, regardless of the quality of the film, it's going to look beautiful, and it does. I also think that the action here is handled a little better than in Skyscraper, because I did like the cinema, some of the cinematography I liked in Skyscraper due to that it was shot by one of my favorite DPs, Robert Ellswood. But it was clear that that was mostly something that where it was like, yeah, we shot this on a soundstage in Vancouver because Universal wouldn't give us money to build, like, ten stories of a floor. I don't know. Like, the action, I would say, is handled better here than it is in Skyscraper. So that is one thing, is that Ross and Thurber kind of improves on his action direction. So that's a good thing. Um, mostly, I will say, there are a few complaints. Like, you know, there are some times where, you know, it, like, this one wasn't, like, a big thing. It's, a, it's, like, mostly on the ground type of thing. You know, clearly there's going to be CG enhancements somewhere here, but the visuals are... Visual effects are pretty good. I was a little scared when I saw some concept footage. I think it was like the little teaser that came out the earlier this year. And I was like, oh, so it's going to be another big CG thing. And I looked at the trailers. It's not like that. It's mostly kind of grounded. This is kind of like Ocean's Eleven with an Indiana Jones twist. And that's where the, the MacGuffin comes in. The three Cleopatra eggs. And, yeah, the, but there is, like, one section of the tr of the movie where, like, there is some obvious CG enhancement. There is some CG work on it. And I won't say what it is, but you saw it in the trailer. I think it was one involving a bull. Um, but, you know, I, I would say that was my complaint, is that the, tra like, the, the teaser trailer I really liked has got me in, but the second trailer for this movie just kind of put it on a little grade. It was like, oh, God, they're just showing everything now. And there is something that happens in this film that I probably, that I, I kind of enjoyed. It doesn't show too much, but there's like a beginning portion of it, and it's in the first act of the movie. I would have liked it if they didn't show it in the second trailer, but, you know, trailers got to show everything nowadays. I think I'm just, I'm just, when it comes to Netflix films, I'm just sticking with the teaser. When it comes to trailers now, I'm just sticking with the teaser footage, or just don't watch the trailer at all if it spoils anything. 
So, but ultimately, I did enjoy it. It is on Netflix now, so you can enjoy it. Make up your mind. I don't care. So let me know what you all thought about the movie Red Notice. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Which one did you like better? This or Skyscraper? I think, actually, this is slightly better than Skyscraper. I'm still type of processing it. So, yeah, I'd say check it out. I mean, like I said, it's not a film that's going to win awards. I don't know if I'm going to put it on my best of list, but it is The Rock doing what he does best, and it is entertaining the hell out of me. And as long as I'm entertained, why do I have a... I don't have a problem. So, yeah, th and for those wondering if I am going to do a view on Home Sweet Home Alone, I'm not. So, let me... So, you know, let me know what you saw over the weekend, if you plan on checking out Red Notice, or if you just want to check out Internals. I still have to check out Eternals, and I did actually check out Shang-Chi this week, um, but I wasn't in, the, like, the, the best mood to review it. I did enjoy that movie, but I wasn't in the best mood to review it. You know, so, it, m my reviews depend on the mood. So, probably I won't review Shang-Chi. Maybe I should try doing a classic movie review. I know there's one movie I probably am going to review... At the end of this year, it's a movie from 2016, can't say which, but yeah, I've got nothing left to add. In fact, um, I think, um, let me just check if, if I'm still recording. Yeah, oh, eight minutes, this is my shortest one ever. And I'm on very wide angle, you can see some of the mess here, I, I, I get a lot of stuff here, so I have to fix this stuff. So... Don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you want. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, Godspeed. Take care.